sweet. Whoa. Who are you? I am the Dragon Warrior. Get it? See the giant dragon? <laughs> Get ready to feel the thunder! Sometimes in a game like Stellaris, you'll come across individual pieces of the game that on the surface seem fine and completely balanced, but when you dig or dive a little deeper into them, you discover they're actually pretty broken and massively overpowered. Today we're going to be talking about the Aquatic trait. This is a trait that came in with the Stellaris DLC or Species Pack Aquatics very recently, only about six months ago, and yeah, it is a little broken. I've talked about Aquatics a couple of times in some of my other videos, but I thought it was about time we dedicated a single video just to how overpowered and broken this trait really is. So let's dive in and find out why. Aquatic is a trait that you will see on a lot of very powerful builds at the moment. Now let's dive into it and see why it is so absolutely horrendously powerful. What does Aquatic do? First off it gives us plus 20% ocean habitability, housing usage on ocean worlds and flooded habitats is minus 10%, and food, energy and mineral output on ocean worlds is plus 10%. It does have some drawbacks. Housing usage on non-wet worlds is plus 30 and habitability on non-wet worlds is minus 20%. So to understand what that's kind of talking about here, we need to look at this page on the name and class screen. So we have our dry worlds on the left, our wet worlds in the middle, and our frozen worlds on the right. The wet worlds include ocean world, which is the one you'll need for aquatic, continental world, and tropical world. All of these other worlds, desert, arid, savanna, Arctic, Alpine, and Tundra are non-wet worlds. And as such, anything outside the main habitability chain here, uh, you're going to have big problems on. But that's not really an issue, and we'll get into why that's not an issue in a moment. First, we should work out how we can get aquatic. Either choose an ocean world as your starting world, then you have the option to get aquatic. Or if you go for ocean paradise, you are guaranteed and must take aquatic. Or finally, the Angler's Civic will lock you into Aquatic as well. So basically, the reason this is so overwhelmingly powerful is the power you get from it is most important right at the start of the game. Let's look at what we would need to take in order to replicate this one point and I really want to stress that here, a single point. It's absolutely bonkers. When Aquatic first came out, or just before it came out, it was meant to come out as a free trade and that would have been beyond broken. But they did up it to one point. I don't think they've gone far enough. I think it should be worth at least three. That's what the Weekend Stellaris Club balance mod does, and I think they're right on the money there. So first off, you have ocean habitability plus 20%. That's basically extremely adaptive, but only working on ocean worlds. Then we'd need to take communal to get that lovely minus 10% to our housing usage. Again, it is only on ocean worlds, but currently we're at five points as opposed to one point. Last but not least, food, energy, and mineral output goes up 10%. Now we can't even take a trait that does that. Very strong, costs three points, and that would only give us 5% extra worker pop resource output. Yes, there are a couple of other jobs that it would benefit too, like crystal mining, etc. Sure, but they are niche jobs and not in the majority. In order to replicate aquatic, we would need to double up very strong, and that would be six points, or we take agrarian, ingenious, and industrious, but which are two points each, and somehow reduce their effectiveness by 33% from 15% down to 10%. But basically, as you can see, if this were to work on everything and it had no downsides, it would cost you somewhere in the region of 10 or 11 points. And if you're enjoying this video, please submerge the like button in overpowered nonsense. But I hear you say it's not a problem. Aquatic is only helpful on ocean worlds and it gives you negative modifiers on other worlds. That's why it's only one point. Sure. But the most important thing for your power in the mid and late game is how well you start in the beginning of the game. If you are one of those people that sets guaranteed habitable worlds down to zero, then absolutely aquatic isn't going to be as powerful as I'm raving about, because you're not going to start with two extra worlds that are your preference. 
but I always play with two guaranteed habitable worlds. I don't know about you, let me know in the comments if you play with, uh, with two guaranteed habitables as well, but that's the way I play, that's the way most multiplayer games are played for fairness and balance, and so I'm just going to assume that is the standard. So if we start a normal game, not only will we get these bonuses on our empire capital, they're going to help with our food production, our mineral production, and our energy production, all giving us a nice tasty additional 10%. They'll also help with our housing costs. As you can see, pop housing needs is only 32 for a population of 35. We're getting a nice 10% reduction there. And that 10% reduction is increasing our pop growth from logistic pop growth. But then when we go out to look at our first two colonies, they also have 100% habitability as well. That's ocean preference for 80 plus 20%. So when we look at one of these, for instance, miners, we're getting 5.7 minerals here, when really we should be getting somewhere in the region of five, slightly under. So that overall here is accounting to around a 20 to 30% boost. Here we have a normal non-aquatic species. This is one of our first colonies and we only have 80% habitability. That means we're getting 10% less resources from jobs, 10% less pop growth speed. Yes, our pops are growing more slowly because we don't have aquatic. Just a one point trait, remember, it's giving us the same positive modifier as having rapid breed as a 10% pop growth for two points due to the change in habitability. We've also got 20% extra pop upkeep and 20% more amenities usage. Now, yes, our miner does look like it's producing more minerals at 6.2, but that's because I've already researched the minerals from miners plus 20% and powered exoskeletons for an extra 5% for 25% bonus to this miner. And on top of that, my governor here actually happens to be an industrialist, so that's a plus 35% mineral output that I shouldn't really be getting. So when I take that 30% off, I am left here in around the plus five region, because instead of getting plus 10% to my resources, like I had with Aquatic, I'm getting a minus 10%, that's a 20% swing. It's simply bonkers that Aquatic is only a single point. Basically, this makes Aquatic pretty much the most powerful starting trait in the game for your capital and your first two colonies. And then after that, if you find non-wet worlds, yes, you'll be at minus 20% habitability from 20% down to 0%. But to be perfectly honest, were you ever going to colonize a 20% habitable world? Probably not. I mean, you might do it just to farm the pops, but you definitely don't want your pops working on a 20% habitable world. That's just crazy. You're going to wait until you can either terraform this planet or change the habitability type of your pops to be able to live here. And so from that point of view, it's really not a disadvantage that you're getting this minus 20% to non-wet worlds. 20% less of nothing is still nothing. I've talked a little bit about meta builds in this video. If you'd like to know how to take advantage of meta builds, for instance, a master crafted technocracy, click the video on screen now.